Choke Canyon State Park, Texas. Right here on the right is our summit. And I'm going to have to back into that baby. So, let's get her done. All right, I'll let Linda get out and uh, she can go ahead and bring it back up right over here. So, back up to the right like that. I'm going to turn the steering wheel, get my hand on the bottom, turn the steering wheel the way I want the back end to go, which is to the right. And we'll just go in nice and slow and get her parked. Ah, first try. Light 101, 50 amp. I got a 50 to 30 amp dog bone. So we're no problem there. Although there's probably a 30 amp site hooked up there. So I'm going to come back a little further because I'm pretty close up there. And we'll do some unhitching here. Um, question is, do I want to be further over that way? Or does it really matter? Um, not really. So we'll uh, check our level uh, left and right. I'm going to come back a little further and then I'll check my level. So we'll check the level here. Um, fancy leveler here. And I'm going to bet we're low this way. So, oh, 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 we are right on. We're right on. So all I'm going to have to do is level. And that's level. Cool. I'm just going to lift it up and uh, pull the truck out. We'll uh, keep going with this here for you in just a second. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is chalk uh, both sides of this so nothing moves. Put that in. Now I'll chalk the other side, and then we'll pick up from there. So we'll go ahead and chalk this side as well, one in front and one in back. Whatever kind of chalk you use. We get those under because when we uh, raise up, raise up the front of that uh, the trailer, we don't want it rolling back, and that's the main thing. Or if I goof up and get something, it won't go anywhere. So we'll uh, next we'll go ahead and get out some stuff to unhitch and show you how that's done. Optionally here, if you want to at this time. Go ahead and get ever whatever stabilizer pads you have down and put them out. If, if you carry them like I do, one for each side. So we can go ahead and just get those down and then it'll be easy to put them up later. Alright, here we go. We'll do the same thing on the other side, put down some pads and then we'll get to unhooking this bad boy, okay? Um, depending on how you like to do it, uh, if I have electricity at a site, I'm going to go ahead and hook my electric up first. So when I uh, go ahead and use my hitch, I've got power from the 12 volt going to that. But this also helps to uh, replenish your batteries to charge those up. So I like to just go ahead and hook this up and it uses a little less electricity from your batteries. So we'll get the, get this all hooked up. And that's just going to be a matter of taking our cable here. This is a, uh, oops, wrong end, sorry. sorry. <laughs> there we go. I got my 30 amp connector. And the uh, protector there, and we're just going to go 
I'm going to make sure this 30 amp switch is off. I don't like to plug them in on. I'm going to leave that off. And then we're going to go ahead and run over. And hook up a 30 amp power. Turn it. That didn't go on easily. You may have it cross threaded, so back off. See, it should spin on and tight, tighten up easily. So we'll turn the uh, power on. A little light will come on on my uh, uh, thing. And if I'm standing here, I can hear the microwave beep. Then I know I've got power. So what we're going to do next is go ahead and block up underneath the, uh, the front of the trailer here. And I'm going to put one more piece of wood on that. Just this nice little flat one I've got. However you do it, I'm thinking about buying a different support for this bottom. So what we'll do next is we're going to, uh, we're chalked, nothing's going to move. Uh, we're going to raise this up and I'm going to have to go up high enough until my stabilizer bars are loose enough to take off. Right now they're bearing too much weight. So we'll uh, take that off. Normally, you notice there it kind of slipped and, and came loose a little bit. Now it's easy enough to take off the stabilizer bar. There we go. Let me do this one real quick. Not sure if you can see this or not, but yeah, you can see. This is where I put my sway bars. I have a five gallon bucket down there. I've shown in the other videos I carry two of these under the bed bins with no tops on them to put things in, and I can just pull them out if I need to or whatever. But this works perfect to store my anti sway weight distribution bars under the pass-through and then we're going to go ahead and take take off our chains of hookups so those are loose and our brake switch and i'll take off power plug don't need that and I'll go ahead and release my pen here. Got a nice little tray to put all my goodies in. So um, when I unhitch, I'll put my locks there. Those will be in here. And I, when I unhitch, I'll take all these out and then just set them right inside there. And they're all in one spot, not get knocked around. And we'll just continue raising this until we've cleared the truck. Who was that? Okay, I'm just going to pull the truck forward a little bit and then we'll uh, bring this back down to level and then put up our staple, put down the stabilizers so we have a nice even tilt in there. All right, we've uh, got the truck all unhitched from there and I know I'm going to have to come down because I was level to start with. And Linda's going to check the level as I bring it down and then start waving furiously at me when it's level. We're level. 
So at this point, I can put things away. Take your hitch off if you want to. We're chocked. We've got our um, got our blocks down for the stabilizers. So we're just going to take those down and then get that tight. And later on, sorry, what I'm going to do is take the manual crank and I will go around and just give these another about one turn, one and a half. You feel it snug up and you may have to repeat that uh, in a day or two after it settles a little bit. So we'll get that done and we'll be back at you. Okay, and here we have water, so Chook Canyon State Park has water and electric only. There's a dump on the way out. And I tried this on this trip for the first time and it really worked well. I was, I'm very happy, just 25 foot hose. This is a zero G hose, so it is. It really is nice. I like this. I love the fact that I don't have to throw throw those things around in there. So these have their two connections on either end. Uh, this one is going to go into the damper, and then I do have a water filter that I'm going to go ahead and hook up at the faucet here and I'll tighten all the connections and check everything a little later on to make sure nothing's leaking and we'll just go in I won't bore you with all this stuff. I'll just show you. So I have on here, this is where I have my pressure regulator. So I decided to put it on this side of, of everything, right in, at the uh, faucet, so I'm protected pretty well through. These, uh, these lines sometimes, this one seems pretty good, but they'll balloon out if you have, even just after the regulator's on. They'll balloon out. You can tell they've got a lot of pressure on them. Had no problem with the zero G, however. So we'll get the water hooked up. And since we have electric, and I did a video on hot water, I'm going to go ahead and turn on. I know I've got water in my hot water heater. So if you think you don't, go check. Because when you flip the switch, if that hot water heater is empty, you could blow your heating element. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it on. I always leave mine off when I travel on the road and then I turn it on when I'm at a campground. And the way I know whether it's on or off, just to double check for me, when this little flip is sticking out, it's not flipped down, but it's up, I know my switch is on. So I always uh, know whether it's on or off and then when I turn it off for travel I'll flip that down then I know that water heater is off. I did forget to mention about the the L on for your water connection because this instead of going straight in with your with your hose which would bend down and crimp just go ahead and get you one of these and it's just going to tighten up. Nice and tight there. And then we'll go in. I could back it up just a bit. Then we can connect to this. It makes it really nice because now your, your hose isn't crimping anywhere when you run your water. Okay? So other than that, all we have to do is put out the slide and start evening things up. So I wanted to show you guys just a few things. I did a really simple back in at uh, in British Columbia at one of the state uh, provincial parks there. But it wasn't, I didn't get to show you how I backed up. And that was pretty simple, but the real trick is to get, put your hand on the bottom 
of the wheel. So if you want that trailer to go to the right, move the bottom of the wheel in the same direction as where you want the trailer to go. And once it starts going, come back down slowly and then watch your angle. You can always go back in either way to correct it, but go slow. That's the main thing. Okay, well, I hope that helps some beginners out there. Yes, you can do it. It's not that difficult as you can see. Thanks, guys.